Oh, hey there. Come on in. We're just about to start. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a fun weekly podcast about nutrition and healthy lifestyle. I'm Rob, and together with my wife Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative and entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. Join us each week as we strive to help you with transforming your overall health and relationship with food through up to date, evidence based nutrition information. Today we have a unique guest, Margot Fedorik, author of Cooking Tips for Desperate Fishwives, an island memoir. Margot Fedorik was born a prairie girl whose only exposure to seafood was a stained flesh of smoked gold eye served cold with mashed potatoes on stifling Winnipeg nights. Then, at age 23, she broke free from her stormy Slavic Jewish upbringing and set out for the wilds of British Columbia. There, Margot planted trees topless, marched her steel toe boots across the burnt landscape, and met the love of her life, a burly, red-headed sea urchin diver. A reborn West Coaster, she embraced her new life and the ocean's bounty. Fresh scallops plucked from the sea, wasabi-covered sashimi smoldering on her tongue, and the exotic orange row of the Red Sea Urchin. This is a story of a family whose livelihood depends on a spiny, round creature that clings to the bottom of the sea and the woman at the center of it clinging precariously to her identity as a modern-day fishwife. An unforgettable memoir infused with mouth-watering recipes, Cooking Tips for Desperate Fishwives is an equal part love story, survival story, and meditation on family dysfunction. Join us today and hear all about Margot's unique story, memoir, and cookbook. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian. Hello, Sandra. Hey, Rob. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> good. So we've got something a little bit different today. Yeah, this episode is a little different than our regular episodes. Um, this one is a um, interview with a local author who wrote a memoir, her memoir, and a cookbook. It's a book that Sandra hasn't been able to put down, and she's been telling me all about it <laughs> on a daily basis. And so we figured it would be appropriate to maybe uh, connect with this author because she's local to us. Yeah, we were able to connect with her and, and interview her. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's fun. And uh, we thought we'd share that interview with you guys. And I think uh, a lot of the listeners will really appreciate the interview and possibly want to go and uh, read her memoir because it's such an interesting, she's such a good writer. And yeah. it's Margot Fedorik. Yeah. You know, even the way she spoke is very colorful, like like lots of descriptive words. And like she paints a really fun picture, even as she's speaking. I, I just found it interesting to listen to after we had recorded it. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go track down Margot. Hi, Margo. Hi. How's it going, Margo? It's going great. The sun is shining and I'm happy to be here. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day on the West Coast because we're all actually in the um, in geographically quite a similar area because you're we're on Vancouver Island, BC, and you are over on Gabriola Island. Yes, that's right. Good old Gabriola. <laughs> that's nice. awesome. Oh, my gosh. And it's so cool. I just want to say how I met you, just for the listeners. We were on BC Ferries, and it's a big ferry that takes us to the mainland from Vancouver Island. And they have a gift shop. And I went in there, and there is this book that has a really cool-looking cover. And the title is Cooking Tips for Desperate Fishwives. And it's a memoir and recipe book or cookbook. And I started reading it a little bit and I just thought, oh my goodness. And uh, I had to buy it. So I'm so glad that you were able to talk to us today and, and talk to the listeners about all of your recipes. And I would just love to hear about yourself and where you live and your background and a little bit about the memoir that you wrote. 
Sure. Okay. My name is Margo, and I actually always wanted to write a book. I didn't know it would actually be a book with recipes in it. It just sort of happened that way. <laughs> but um, I kind of, I've always dreamed of writing a book, but I, it wasn't until my children grew up and sort of left the nest where I actually found myself saying, oh, well, what should I do now? Here's the time that I should get down to business and do all the things that I blamed them for oh. holding me back. Right. Um, so <laughs> I I took some online courses and then I actually went back to university and uh, joined the creative writing program at uh, Vancouver Island University. And then that's how this book came to be. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And have you got some background in writing or is this brand new for you? Um, I guess, I mean, I've read voraciously as a child, so I feel like that's in a way kind of you know, sort of paved the way for my wordsmith profession. Nice. But it was really, maybe it was about three years of training at VIU and yeah. And a lot of passion. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. And there was actually, um, I was looking on your website and I noticed that you had some blogs on there and you've written for like uh, Globe and Mail, for instance, I think there was an article uh, titled, are our mystery bags of family spices a reflection of who we are? And then one of the quotes that you had put in there, I want to live my life with plenty of strong flavors. I don't want our meals ever to be bland. I want my family's insides to be washed clean with turmeric. I want spicy dinners to bring my family together every night, not only to give us health, but to enjoy mouth-watering meals. I just love that. I was like, oh my goodness, this, oh yeah, we have to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> that was it makes so me cool. miss it makes me miss my family because now they're you know it's kind of different dynamics when you had kids coming home every night and you'd have giant meals together it's kind of different yeah. now that it's just me and my husband but he doesn't totally. he doesn't get the fancy meals is that what you're saying <laughs> no and now that i'm you know now that i've been working full-time and um going back in school and promoting my book I'm finding that my husband is doing a lot of the cooking these days. Oh, oh that's interesting. Fun. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny that that quote stood out to me. Partly, we just did an episode last week on family meals and the importance of eating meals together as a family. It's so important for the kids and for their development and just for our uh, humans, our social. So it's like, so to pair that with uh good healthy recipes that you have throughout your book it was like oh I just definitely want to talk to you so <laughs> well and it was really fun too because my kids helped me a bit too like helped me with the recipes so oh. even though we don't live in the same they don't live on Gabriel anymore we got to sort of interact like Chloe helped me quite a bit um refining the the lasagna recipe oh nice. you know and Haley <laughs> she didn't know this at the time but um, we actually had, but it had to be cut because they had to take out some pages, you know, when I, when the book yeah. was being published. Yeah, so we yeah. did have a beautiful seafood paella recipe in there that Haley created for our, it was during our wedding feast. So there oh. was a whole chapter on that. And then we had the paella recipe. And so she was bragging to her friends all the time that her paella recipe was in the book. And I forgot <laughs> to tell her that it was cut. So oh, no. Was kind of, yeah. Very oh, that's awesome. And how old are, are Chloe and Haley? Oh, gosh. It's hard for me to remember. I, I, think, know. It's, uh, tw I think it's 22 and 28. Oh. I don't know how that happened to me. They're, you know. Uh, yeah, still they're still kids, baby. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, funny. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, we can, uh, maybe we can publish one of her uh, recipes on social media or something. Oh, with this, yeah, with the this. paella. So that's she can get her, her, her name in the spotlight. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it was it's a very complicated recipe and it used to be I mean, very expensive unless you have access to things like spot prawns and sea urchin which we used to have freezer fulls, but um we don't anymore, so it might be quite a pricey pricey right. dish. Well, it's yeah, a special I... dish then. Mm -hmm. Special occasions. Yeah. It was well, that's awesome. So in the like in the memoir, um it's your, your husband usually uh, is a sea urchin diver. Like, so he dives for sea urchins for um, 
a living and he's away a lot of the time. And that was part of the, uh, part of the story in the memoir that was so interesting. You know, it was kind of like, I think people that have, um, husbands that work away and then come back and, you know, leave again, it, they could probably resonate with your story. Yeah. It's, uh, it was, yeah. It was hard. Is he For still sure. away a lot or is he now working more closer to home? Um, he just maybe the past year or two has it been already? He's been doing he's yeah, he's pretty much retired full time from working on the ocean. Oh wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you could, just so that um listeners have an idea about like what the your book. Um, could you read that, uh, the kind of the excerpt that we talked about, the one that really kind of hooked me? <laughs> sure, sure. <Okay. laughs> yeah, so it's from the intro. Yeah, right? the intro. That's right. The one uh, at the intro. Now you'll know why they called me a dysfunctional family. I was quite <laughs> shocked when they used that word. It's like, what? How could that be? <laughs> everybody's dysfunctional i mean there's no normal i you know what i mean i think everyone's got their quirks it's just you're dysfunctional compared to somebody else but then you know where where's the normal line where is the normal but anyway okay well here we go <laughs> the night i ran over rick with my car i was over four months pregnant with our first daughter I remember crouching at his side knees painfully ground into the concrete as i swayed over him in my grief I didn't know it then, that it was too late. An invisible cord was tethering us, not just me to the baby, but all of us wound up together, pulsing towards everything that came after. Earlier that night, I had made a vegetarian lasagna. Rick was two hours late. I couldn't call him from our rental suite because we had canceled our phone service in advance of a move to a new condo, closer to downtown Victoria, near the Galloping Goose Trail. I walked downstairs to call Rick from the suite below. It was occupied by an unhappy single mom. I often heard her yelling at her timid preschooler through the thin floors covered in shag carpeting running the length of the 70s style rancher. She was a heavy woman and I imagined her jowls shaking with the effort. I made no attempt to hide my emotions, bonded as we were under the same roof of sorrow. She let me into her suite, unperturbed by my distressed state, Mothers, I surmise by her bemused expression, must ready themselves for disaster. I had hardly registered much of the surroundings as I dialed Rick's cell phone, hands shaking, fingers still pungent with garlic. He was out for a drink at Sydney's Blue Peter Pub with his crew after the dive. That night he had been seeking small green urchins found on the murky bottom of the ocean, surprisingly close to home for once. I told him not to bother coming home. He took this to mean he didn't have to come back home immediately. Yet why didn't he know? Most nights I couldn't sleep for the baby kicking me in the bladder. I was sure my fat cells were multiplying each night as I lay sweating on the mattress. I could only take short, shallow breaths while the baby dug into my diaphragm and Rick snored, oblivious to my discomfort. I felt even more alone with that untouched, perfect lasagna. I flashed forward to my baby's birth and everything that would come after. Who would be there for me then? My own mother had died when I was 23 years old, skeletal from cancer. She wasn't there to warn me against marrying someone whose job takes them up and down the West Coast for half of each year. Would I have listened if she had protested? Who listens to their mother when it comes to love? Oh, I just love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Funny. I think Rob will have to read this book now because he hasn't read it yet. And uh, I keep talking a little bit of like, do. <laughs> I don't need to read it because Sanders told me so much about it and, and reads excerpts to me all the time. So I've got a pretty good taste of what's uh, what it's all about. It yeah, sounds uh, it sounds fun and quirky and uh, lots of fun little stories in it. Hey, oh, totally. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's funny because um there's so many things that drew, drew me to, you know, when I read that. And then um, I want to read a little bit of what the very first time I picked it up and I turned to page 55 and I read this right here. At the end of a long day of planting, we waited in line for our turn in the shower. That day, I noticed one of the male planters named Rick was fishing for a scrap of muddy soap that someone had dropped beneath the slats of wood. I was disgusted. 
casting a sideways glance at his pale, naked backside. He had wide, thick shoulders and a long, white back. Years later, we would tell our daughters this story around the dinner table and laugh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, this sounds like so interesting. And then with paired with the first excerpt that you read, I was thinking, I wonder if he died. I wonder if she ran him over and he died. <laughs> no. Oh gosh. Then it would be a really like, functional. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's so funny though. Like just the story, it was almost like, there was all these pieces that, you know, reading the start there, it's like, oh my gosh, it was like, it kept me really in, like I was intrigued and I had to hear more. And then just talking about like the galloping goose, like we lived, our our first house in Victoria was right by the galloping goose trail, like near VGH. And so just like, there was so many commonalities and I'm sure other people who would read this would be like, Oh my goodness, like it just there's it resonates with that like your story resonates with so many different ideas of uh, probably other people too. So yeah, it just really hooked me anyways. <laughs> oh, I miss the galloping goose and all those blackberries. That's oh right. yeah. Blackberries yeah. galore. Mhm. That's They're right. So nice. And I could I could never everyone's always like, "Oh yeah, pick the berries in the fall and then you've got them all winter long. It's great." I'm like, "I they never made it home with me. I would just eat them all on the spot and my bucket would always be empty." So that never really uh that never really worked for me, but I guess in theory it it makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with the um with all of the recipes throughout each chapter, are these recipes that you tend to make um, over and over again? Or does, it, like if Rick's cooking, does he, does, how does he cook? Is it just like whatever's in the fridge or does he uh, buy recipes? No, I'm pretty bossy. I tell him what I want all the time. <laughs> Perfect. So, plus, you know, we've been really busy lately. So I'll say something like, oh, this miso chicken soup sounds fabulous. Why don't you put one up? you know, make a big batch in the one pot and we'll eat it for days. That's sort of nice. how it works around here. Smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. We we'll do that and too. It's, it's nice having, well, you put a lot of effort into something. It's nice to have it last more than one meal. Yeah. And I, I love doing that. And also, you know, I'll follow a lot of food bloggers and if I find a recipe I like, I just send it to him, which is, <laughs> is my signal is like, I want this Brussels sprout salad. <laughs> That's Excellent it, communication. Great too. Yeah, we'll have it in the fridge for a few days and, you know, it's healthy. And so, oh, yeah. but what recipes do I make the most from that book? Um, I often make the blintz recipe. It's like so fast and easy and I can do it with my eyes closed. Um, I think Rob probably doesn't know what that is. Could you explain yeah, I was gonna um, ask. a yeah. little bit like what? Oh, blintzes, they're like French crepes, I guess. Okay. Like, like yeah, that sounds fresh. familiar. Yeah, but I don't know, in our family, I guess maybe Russian or Jewish background, call them blintzes. Okay. And I can I'd whip those babies up like in a flash. And I usually eat them standing up. Like <laughs> I just pour maple syrup and as I'm cooking them, I eat them. So there, Perfect. I make that a lot. And I make a lot of pizzas because to me, it's sort of like a fast thing to make. And you can throw anything you want on them, like whatever's totally. in your fridge, like Brussels sprouts or, I don't know, capers or, you know. Do you totally. do anything Do you do you anything to the Brussels sprouts? Like, do you um, uh, marinate them or grill them or anything first? Uh, well, we have some favorite ways we like to do Brussels sprouts. Um, I love that method where you just chop them super fine and you fry them really fast. Right. In like three minutes and then just squeeze a little lemon on them. Mm, that sounds good. That's my favorite way. We hmm. don't ever, we've never done that. That is awesome. I love that yeah. you just had a technique that I'm sure there's lots of people out there listening that have never oh, cut up or done their Brussels sprouts yeah. that way. That's awesome. I love that. So you just, so you take them raw and then you cut them really finely? Yeah. And I think, I can't remember where we saw it. Maybe it was a Jamie Oliver trick or something. I don't know. But you have to, it's kind of the prep is the hard part. So you have to cut out their little, you know, their little broccoli bums first. <laughs> <laughs> you cut them in half and, you know what I mean, that little stem. The little so you stump, get rid of those, yeah. Chop them really fine. You just flash fry them like super fast. And then I think it's like one little blob of butter, salt, and lemon. And that's it. Oh, delicious. That sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I 
couldn't stand Brussels sprouts growing up. Uh, there's some funny stories that we've discussed of me sitting late at night, not eating my Brussels sprouts and I, you know, can't go to bed until I finish them sort of thing. And <laughs> that was the one food that I didn't like was Brussels sprouts. And later in my life, I ate some Brussels sprouts that were cooked in a different way. And it sounds kind of like how you did them. They were fried and they had some seasoning on them and, and they were so good. I'm like, oh my God, these are Brussels sprouts. They're like, this isn't what I grew up eating. Yeah. In the old days, they used to do weird things with them, like cook them with lots of cheese and stuff, right? I think. Well, I didn't even, I, w- I would have eaten them with cheese. These were just like, <laughs> just straight up. Boiled. Just I think nothing. They were yeah. I'm like, yeah. The, I don't even think there was salt on them. They were just straight up Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, these are nasty. So, yeah, they're, uh, they can be good. So, yeah, I agree. It's funny because, you know, when maybe if you read my book, you'll understand, you know, when the kid we were growing up and the kids were, little you know something like asparagus was too expensive right because there yeah. was always like sure, oh, yeah. sorry. so like one day we were at a wedding and my youngest daughter i love this she ran up to us in her cute little dress and said mommy you won't believe this most amazing thing i've had and we realized it was her first time she's tried asparagus oh. because <laughs> we never would buy them and she was just like so in awe of this amazing thing and so then after that we started buying asparagus that's oh great. that's good that's funny it's funny hey i wouldn't yeah. think asparagus is one of those things that someone would get excited about because it's no, got no, sort she... of a unique kind of flavor to it as well I right know. But, well she's uh... kind of a different kid anyway <laughs> there she was you the go. one that's always making homemade pasta for me and oh nice oh. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So that's what I was going to ask. Like, do yeah. they both cook? Like, are they both like, oh, uh, yeah. Love- yeah, yes, definitely. And I think part of it, and I don't know if I mention it much in my book, but it's just sometimes when you live on an island and there's not much to do to me, cooking with my kids was a way to do something that's cheap and easy and was bonding. And then you have dinner at the end. Exactly. Oh. It's an activity mm-hmm. and it's educational and yeah. it's social. And and yeah, there's, and it, it's, it's, uh, there's lots to it. Yeah. And it, it benefited me because I remember sometimes if I had a long work day, I'd tell my daughter, like, let's say on a, I, there was always so many pro D days. It drove me crazy <laughs> that I remember saying, okay, you know, why don't you guys make samosas today? Oh, nice. And they go, yay. And so they'd spend the whole day, you know, rowing, rolling out the dough and making the potatoes and whatever. It takes forever, but they're super happy. And then I come home and there's homemade samosas. That's oh, awesome. That, that is. is amazing. That's like, mm-hmm. you know, the skills that they had and just that connection with you. Like, it's just it, it, like you guys obviously have a close family connection, you and your daughters and and those uh tools like in terms of life skills you've given them with cooking that that's just so great I love to see that I think they've surpassed me to be honest <laughs> yes probably Something, like with their with cooking, like just their creativity in the kitchen yeah like I I mean like I said I'm so busy with other parts of my life that sort of cooking is not being my you know major thing these days plus right. also I may I still make soap and in a way that's that's spending a lot of hours over a pot too. So I haven't been doing it as much, but my kids, now that they're out on their own, they're, you know, exploring and doing really cool things. Like they'll come home with like rosemary and brown butter cookies or something. Oh, and it's like, oh, who knew? Oh. Who knew that that's a thing now? That's brown awesome. Butter. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, and, uh, like, it's like you've, them to th- you've, Sorry, sorry. I was just thinking for them to think that you're, uh, you know, their their mom is a famous author and cookbook, um, like has a cookbook. I mean, that's uh, that's pretty. I'm sure they're pretty proud. Like they must look up to you. Maybe they don't tell you to your face because sometimes that doesn't always happen. But I bet they, you know, they have a really strong role model, you know, ahead of them there. So, anyways, sorry. What were you gonna say, Rob? Pretty much that. Yeah, pretty much they. Uh you've kind of passed the torch to them and, and uh, they're carrying on kind of what you started. Yeah, I think they're proud of me, even though one daughter, I don't think she's read the book because she's kind of more, you know, a private person, but mm-hmm. she's super proud of me. She she even helped me quite a bit with TikTok, which I'm not, I'm not great at TikTok. So oh, like the me. video, like the social media? 
Yeah. 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 Tiffany oh, helped yeah. Me. I think she did a whole video of her little hands cooking Aunt Marie's ginger snaps. It's really oh, cute. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. And that's in, that's in your book, the ginger snaps. Yeah. Yeah. Aunt Marie's ginger snaps. I love it. I love the fact that in every chapter, there's a recipe and it kind of goes along with the story, like the part of the chapter that, you know, you're, you're talking about, and then there's the recipe and it's like, oh, I love this. What a cool way to make a book and a memoir. And it, it actually helped me sort of thread the book together. Cause when I was writing it, I called up my professor who was helping me and I, I cried. I cry <laughs> a lot, but you'll understand that if you read that in the book. And I said, I don't know. I don't know if this is a whole book, if it makes sense, how do I, you know, put it together? And she goes, well, um, you know, did you ever try chronologically? And I'm there, no. And then some, <laughs> somehow it made sense. Like it, we came to figure out that the recipes would help, you know, make it all one. And it, and I'm, I'm really pleased. That's a really and, neat concept. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to read it. I'm going to have to read it now. Well, it's here. I, I have that, the book, Rob. You should definitely. Yeah, I'm going to be passing it to my mom and passing it to other friends. So you better read it while we have it in the house. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I want to know about the urchins. Were, oh, you yeah. guys said you, you were cooking with them a lot. Yeah, well, not in the beginning. Like for many years, I'm there. I'm from Winnipeg. It's like fish. Ooh. Right. right? Okay. <laughs> but you know, as I you know got more comfortable with seafood. Sea urchin is like a superfood, really. Really? So, well, he's not in the industry anymore, but, you know, he used to come home with fresh urchins or even once in a while, someone like a friend will come and bring us some urchins and yeah, it'll, it's fabulous in like seafood chowder or you can actually freeze it like fresh, you know, take the fresh roe and freeze it for later to put in a, in a chowder or something. Really? And what, is it, what does it look like? Is it like a chunk of something or is it? Uh... Um, so if you open up an urchin, it sort of looks like, um, like row. Okay. I'm just trying to think like it comes in these like little strips of row. I guess. Okay. You know? Yeah. And the fresher it is, the more orange it is. Oh, neat. Yeah. I, I, I had no idea that that was a thing. That's really interesting. You didn't know you could eat urchins? Is that what yeah, you Yeah, I had never now? heard yeah. of that. It's not one of your sort of standard kind of seafoods that... And I don't know why it's not, you know, we don't eat it more in BC because there's so many urchin divers. There's a big urchin diving industry, but it all mostly gets shipped to Asian markets. So That's what I was so wondering. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Huh. Do you know what kind of nutritional benefits it has? Is I don't it know. different I just than other? Some words. Yeah, just... I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, tons of, tons of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's probably loaded with the omega threes and other. Zinc and yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll totally. have to look that I, up. I think it's one of the, um, with the first nations around BC, uh, they were eating them for generations. Oh, that makes sense. Oh yeah. My neighbor, first nations man, um, whenever we have extra, we always give it to him and he's like so happy. He's like, oh, just like growing up. I <laughs> bet, I bet. And they're not exactly available for people to buy like locally. Like, yeah, it's not easy to get them. It was so interesting just um, reading your background and the fact that you, you know, you left Winnipeg to go tree planting in Prince George, BC. No, I loved, I loved tree planting for sure. It was for anyone who loves, you know, being outdoors, working with their body. Absolutely. Yeah. And I bet that helped, like, I bet it framed your, like your uh, future in terms of being with Rick and then being from Winnipeg originally and coming out to the West Coast. And now you are using all these, the seafood in your cooking and you live on an island, you know, it's like, you know, it's very uh, nature, you know, the, the whole outdoors living on the island. And I think that's so interesting. So it's kind of like, you left the prairies, came out to the West Coast, and your life, you know, went from there. And I think it's just so cool to read your book. And yeah, it was just, I had to, I had to talk to you. And I'm so glad because Aww. all of these, uh, these, you know, the recipes are amazing. And I 
just really like in that Globe and Mail article about are our mystery bags of family spices a reflection of who we are? Because <laughs> it's so true. I mean, you know, I I've, still have that box of spices that are just like they're just ridiculous. Like they just are like ripped open, jagged things of cumin and coriander yep. and <laughs> I don't know, poultry seasoning from two years ago. And but now Rick is, you know, he loves spicy food. And now, and now we all love spicy food. Because, oh, yeah. So he grows his own hot peppers. And nice. some of them make me so mad because they're so hot. They're, he grows, you know, something called one pot where oh, really? one pepper will, no, seven pot. Oh. One pepper will spice seven pots of food. Oh, oh my God. God. It, it's oh. ridiculous. So slowly we're getting used to just having very spicy food or I don't usually have his super spicy ones, but he often makes like a fresh, like he'll take fresh carrots and lemon and puree hot peppers and we pour it on everything. And it just is all so fresh tasting oh, to have like a fresh hot pepper sauce. Oh. Do you yeah, guys just oh. kind of make it up? Or are you like, are you kind of a mad scientist in the kitchen just trying different things? Or are you following um, some guidelines? Or We don't follow many guidelines. Awesome. No. I mean, usually the first time we make something, we might look up, like if Rick's making kimchi or something, right? He'll look up how to do it properly and then go from there. Perfect. That's kind of how I like to cook because it just, yeah. I can't stand all the measuring cups and no. you have to, you know, all the rules that go with, being in the kitchen because no to me it's like an art and it's like I want to be the artist I don't want to follow a, a rule book I want to just go in there and who says I can't put ketchup on whatever or add <laughs> you know something strange to my to my pasta it's like if I think it tastes good I want to do it yeah, so exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, I love to hear that. except for I'm gonna say if you do make the soap recipe in my book you can't you can't stray when you're making soap. That's kind of like baking, right? Yeah. yeah. Baking, you have to be a bit more precise, but that's why I don't bake too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question. You said kimchi. That's so cool. He makes kimchi. Tell me, do you know like his the steps that he takes? Because that is something that we eat all the time and I've never thought of making it. I can't remember. Do you have to like um, massage something first with salt? Yes. Okay. It's like sauerkraut then. Yeah, it's the same kind he has of, to massage yeah. it, but he has to wear his gloves. I think he, you know, I think he he watched a YouTube video on how to do it authentically, and then just took it from there. That's mm -hmm. neat. But I can't remember the exact because I didn't do it. I just <laughs> I like it, so I always say, "Hey, can you make some of that kimchi? It's so good for you." <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fermented awesome. foods, right? Exactly. Do you put it on your pizza at all? Oh. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we had a, uh, there's a place in uh, where we live and they were making pizzas and one of their pizzas had kimchi on it and I'd never had kimchi before and it was awesome. They made their own kimchi Ooh. and it was like kimchi and I can't remember the meat. It was really, really good though. Like Ooh, what a I'm unique right. pizza uh, topping. I'll try to look it up for you and see if I can send oh, you the, uh, send you the ingredients that were on that. Like the toppings, I mean, so because it was good. I was just going to say, speaking about fermented foods, we do have a beautiful recipe for tempeche in mm. the book, which is like a fermented pineapple drink, which oh, is fabulous. Huh. In the summer, it's so good. And there was a time where, well, I always make Rick do all the hard stuff. I don't know why. Maybe I'm a bossy <laughs> wife or something. But <laughs> there was a time where you'd have a tempeche going, and then you'd also have kombucha. Oh, nice. And then, ah. and then, so the tempeche he would have with like a spicy, of course, we always throw spice, like a hot pepper in it. So then we'd combine the two for this most fabulous drink. That oh sounds my God. Amazing. I was going to ask if it was like kombucha. So it was, it's similar, but it's different. Yeah. It's like a, it's, so you ferment a pineapple basically with the skin on. It is so easy. Like, oh, interesting. And just tastes so good. Especially, oh. you know, on a hot summer day to have like a fresh, anyway. And it kind of, yeah. it's like carbonated almost. Like it tastes like fizzy, like kind of yeah, like kombucha. It's so okay. good. Yeah. Is that okay. in your book, that recipe? It is. Perfect. Yeah. Gonna See, Rob's going to, Rob's going to end up reading this book one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. recipes in it that he wants to try. That's awesome. Well, it sounds so I unique. Have, yeah. I have such a, I don't know where we found it, you know, 
I guess YouTube is fabulous that way. We have certain people that we watch. I don't remember their name. Some guy from Toronto. Is he called Rob and Friends or something? Oh, for fermented stuff? Oh, no, just for recipes in general. But oh, I okay. love that. I, what does he do? No, he takes old recipes from like a million years ago and he recreates them to see if they're good. That's super fun. We love that one. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's so fun. Mm. Actually, it's funny because on a previous episode, we had uh, we talked about like, do you wash your poultry like with soap and water? Because there was some oh. TikTok trends like having people like washing their chicken, their raw right. poultry before they cook it. And it actually is yeah. not a good idea because it spreads the bacteria all over the kitchen. And oh. and definitely the soap is not good because if you don't get the residue off, then you're going to get diarrhea from like having no. soap. So, yeah. and it was, and, but I guess Julia Child and some of those famous cooks from mm -hmm. way back used to wash the chicken and I think it was because they had feathers and other debris because oh, they've maybe. got them from their backyard and started cooking hmm. with them so yeah in that respect yeah you wash it but not if you're buying it from the grocery store right it's funny though because my I remember my mother would wash chicken so oh, yeah. Yeah. Just there, from the yeah yeah so it is definitely something people used to do that's funny. yeah that's yeah um, you mentioned about like the soap recipes and that there's lots in there or they're just that you have to be precise. I wanted to say that uh, the fact that you are a soap maker and that you're at the market on Gabriola Island, what, for the last 18 years? Yeah. I mean, there was a little break when I went to Calgary, which is also in the book. But yeah, for most part, I started in 2000, I guess. Oh, you know what oh. I think is kind of ironic that little that little section that Sandra read out of the book about Rick with his little Dropping muddy piece soap. of soap. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe know. there's some uh, subconscious, uh, you know, connection. Yeah, there you go. Association or something. I'm going to yeah, start making maybe. soap. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Well, I always had it in my mind, but that's in my book too. There oh. we go. You always knew that you were going to make soap. It was sort of just this. I had this dream. I don't know why. Or maybe it is in my book. I don't even remember. I haven't read the book for a while. I forget what's in it. Um, <laughs> but I I remember dancing in nightclubs in the 80s with my little pink cowboy boots from Le Chateau. Right. Yeah, right. Sounds you know? like, oh my God, I remember yeah. Le Chateau. That's yeah, hilarious. Le Chateau. And I was jingling around, dancing to like really bad mu 80s music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, and I wham. Drink, it was like draft night in our you know, drafts for like 50 cents each or something. And, <laughs> you know, and I'd say, you know what, I just want to move to a farm and make my own soap. <laughs> my friends would laugh at me and go, what are you even, have you had too many drafts? And, but I knew it, was, it was, you know, a desire that was in me. It was your destiny. It was my your destiny. destiny. And look at your there life. You You're living on a, on a Vancouver Island, like a, um, a golf island on a like a very small community and you're a crafter and it's amazing it's like and it's all in your memoir and you know i i really want listeners to uh consider looking up this book and um yeah looking up margo and we're going to have all the links to uh you know how people can buy the book and learn more about you on our show notes but uh yeah i just think it's such a good book and it just hooked me and yeah, I just there's one other question before we finish, and that is if you were going to or when you go to a potluck gathering, what dish would you bring? Ah, well, so many I, options, hey? Yeah, I usually bring when we go to potlucks, but it's been COVID, so there hasn't been a huge amount of potlucks yeah. these days. <laughs> but usually, our go to thing is Rick Caesar salad because people just love it. I don't know oh. why. Um, that's Sounds usually, delicious. but I'm also a big pizza person, like, uh, like a pesto pizza with like a spicy salami on it or something. Yum. Oh, I find, especially if you make the pesto yourself with stinging nettle. Oh, oh nice. yes. That's you know? in your book. The recipe stinging yeah. nettle pesto. Oh yeah. I want to yeah. make that. Yeah. And I have, unfortunately, I thought it would be a brilliant idea to plant some nettle in our garden because I use it so much. But uh oh, <laughs> it's stinging though, right? I know it's jumping beds. Like I thought, well, Rick was not very happy. He goes, okay, I'll let you plant a little nettle in this corner. Well, now it's 
it's everywhere. everywhere. Oh man, oh, is it? It's like it's like mint. It's just prolific. It just kind of spreads, eh? Yeah, it's going. And I keep I I keep saying, well, let me just make this. You know, I also make shampoo bars out of it. I'll say, okay, just save it for a little bit. I'll make this batch of shampoo bars, and then I'll pull the rest. So I'll think that it's all gone, and nope, comes back. It That's keeps funny. going. Oh my gosh. So it's really one of those almost invasive. Uh, yeah. Why uh, did I do it? So I don't <laughs> recommend do not plant nettle in your garden. Yeah. No kidding. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good advice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited that there'll be more people that hear about your book and that um, will look you up and look up your recipes. And I'm excited that Rob might actually pick up your book and read it from uh, start to finish. That would be well, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> more intrigued now. Yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> totally. thank you. Well, this is why I had to I had to interview Margot, Rob. Exactly. Now Sandra's been <laughs> talking about you almost every day since she read this book. It's hilarious. Like it. She's like, I read this other thing. You gotta read this. You gotta check this this part out and look at this recipe and we gotta interview this lady. It's yeah. My poor really husband neat. has to same thing. I always am reading in poetry against his will and things uh. like that. <laughs> against his will. Part of marriage. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny oh yeah you can tell actually with your relationship you can tell that you're like the emotional and like you just you wear your heart on your sleeve and rick's the very like methodical and very logical oh, yeah. and <laughs> that's why it works I guess. yeah that's right totally and that's... where can people get a hold of you margo or reach you or find your book or is there a website or facebook uh, page yeah or... i have a website margo fedora ca but also it's available everywhere call up any local independent bookstore it's all awesome. across canada or even amazon or chapters online everywhere right on. nice is it in the libraries like you were working at one yeah. of the you oh that was in calgary before you wrote the book but you worked at yeah. a library yep yeah, it's in it's in all the libraries i think some of them you can even like download a whole chapter for free from oh. the library Oh, want to get a taste. yeah, that's it. That's a good way for people to do it to like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Cause then they could see, they could get a sample. And I mean, you read a bit and I read a bit too, but, uh, and if that doesn't hook you, I don't know what will, cause it's, it's a really there good book. Go. <laughs> and it's I a don't fast remember read. What library it was, but maybe, I don't know why, maybe it was a Toronto library had that option. Or something. That's awesome. That's so cool. Is it in the States at all? Um, I, you can order it through Amazon in the States. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good. Well, we'll put, we'll put all those links in the show notes so people can, uh, yeah, track it down and, uh, Great. and check out those recipes. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And if there's a, if you put out another book or like, I'm definitely going to be reading it obviously, <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll keep in touch and uh, love to interview in, you in the future. Well, thank you very much. This has been <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Fun. Thanks for, for joining us today. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Wow. That was quite interesting. What a great interview, eh? Yeah, really unique uh, story. And I loved hearing just how her, she described everything. I know, I know. I'm so glad she wrote a memoir because her life sounds so um, unique. Yeah, there's just, there's so much more in the book. Oh yeah, I bet. I'm I'm uh, a lot more inclined to read it now. Even though I've heard all about it, I still kind of want to dig into it a bit more because there sounds like there's probably... The stories are a little bit more detailed and in depth, and there's probably obviously things we didn't talk about. So yeah, and her life has taken so many twists and turns, and it's just so interesting. And how cooking was like a central theme of her life, and now it's translated into her daughters are loving cooking and being in the kitchen too. Yeah, there's so many elements of that story that are, are just really interesting. So. Yeah, go check it out. And Margot gave everyone sort of where you can find it. We'll include those um, in the show notes, uh, her website and the name of the book and all those details. So you guys can track it down if you're so inclined. And what's coming up, Sandra? Yeah, we have a great interview coming up with Embracing Intuition. Right, with Sandra Teese. Yes, that's right. It's all about 
intuitive eating and mindful eating and listening to our body. And she's got so many good perspectives and such a great interview. She's super passionate. And uh, yeah, that's a great interview. So that'll be coming up. I don't know if it's next Monday or the Monday after, but we'll have that up for you guys soon. And uh, what about courses? You have some courses you wanted to talk about? There's some courses on the website and you can link into them that way. Um, there's one for dietitians on nutrition and dementia in long-term care. And there's also a former one that I did that's still available for people to listen to, and that's oncology and nutrition. And you can find those on the website. And that's mywifethedietitian.com. And yeah, uh, there'll be other courses coming up as well, and we'll keep you posted on those. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, you can also check out the blog articles. There's a few new articles up there. Um, we're posting those up pretty regularly. A lot of them are the uh, guests that we've had on the show that have written an article for us. So you can get a little bit more information about them and the topic we discussed. And you can also check out Facebook and Instagram and our YouTube channel as well. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate to email us. Um, we love hearing everything you guys have to say, comments, questions, whatever. And that is mywifetherd at gmail.com. And let us know if you've read uh, Cooking Tips for Desperate Fishwives by Margot Fedorak, because it's. Uh, I'd love to hear other readers that have uh, seen that or read that book. Yeah, don't be shy. And don't uh, forget to rate and review the show. That always helps us. It helps uh, get the show a bit more visible for other people to enjoy. So we appreciate anything you can do with that. And thanks for coming out. We really appreciate everyone listening to us every week. Um, it's awesome that you have us in your ear on your walk or during your chores around the house or driving to and from work or commuting However you listen to your podcast, we appreciate the time that you spend with us. Um, we value your listening ears. I'd be kind of curious to hear how, hear when people listen to us. That'd be kind of a funny little poll. Well, I know that uh, for me, it's like anytime I'm out like walking the dog or uh, driving, um, anytime I can have a little bit of um, me time that's got I have my earbuds in and I listen to various podcasts. So I imagine that's like a lot of people. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, however you listen, uh, we appreciate it. And be sure to join us next time. Thanks, Rob. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. 